an assessment is done. There's no, there's no limitations. Agna my guidelines. It all depends. But at that time, if you want to for any, how much it's worth one, uh, because that is weighed against. Um, I don't know if he can hear me, but how much is your car worth? That's the first thing. Mm. And what's the value of the car that you want? You know, if for instance your car is valued at two hundred. Um, and then the car that you want is, you know, 300, for mm, instance. Mm. That difference is you, you get a shortfall that you would then need to either pay to get into your new car or push it forward as, as part of your new finance onto onto mm. your new car. Okay. But there are no limitations. It's it's really valued in motor owner, your mind, for the one that you're taking back against the one that you that you want. You can trade it in. I mean, very, very important question. I think you can trade it in, but you are still liable for, for Leo Motors. So if you trade it in for a new car, that amount of money, an assessment still needs to be done. You know, that, that can be pushed forward if you can afford, because mm -hmm. it's all about affordability. Sure. It can be pushed forward to your new car, given the fact that you afford it. Never advisable, you know, um, because, I mean, nine out of 10 times, Abantu Abatati balloon, payment or a balloon option you know come the end they don't have that money that's the reality mm. so we, we it's not advisable but that option exists um okay. and affordability assessment is done you must be able to afford it because you're liable for it essentially the option if you if, if it's declined for the refinance by the bank is to maybe go to your bank and just to find out if you know can you loan that money from your bank obviously they will charge an interest uh, you know um, speak to you know our legal disease department make arrangements in terms of uh, payment arrangements you know okay you can't afford the 30,000 um, you know what are the other options in terms of your bank maybe go to your bank borrow pay us um, the last last resort is to really what we call you know give the car back to the bank because it will go through the normal process you're, but you're owing on the car Payment arrangements are not made. You're declining on, um, on, on, on payments. We'll have to repossess it eventually. And that's the unfortunate part uh, to be in. Because, and again, a Kaiser liability, you know, nine out of 10 times, again, you know, there will be that shortfall that, it, that, that you owe because it decreases its value. Mm. Mm. Unless you are exactly at break even point, it's very rare that the amount that you owe on the car will be the same as what you can get for it. Um, yeah, I always say but leg in the is the homework here. You know, understand but what is it that you need the car for? And can you really afford it? Um, you know, Ubuga I'm an expense worker for instance. Uholamalini and how much of, of that money goes out to other expenses and how much you are left with because a lot of times uh a is a mistake you the car is the only thing that they need um, to mm. finance for. Mm. So I always say, Yenzi homework yako, you know, research, to the different options that are there, mm -hmm. and uh, make an informed decision based on what you need, one, and two, what you can afford after right. a thorough assessment, uh, obviously with a relevant person, uh, like a, you know, a finance and insurance manager at a dealership. Um, mm -hmm. And, and there's, there's lots of information, a, a, a corner online as you research, as you Google. I always say an assessment has to be done, you know, so, I mean, a, a balloon payment is tricky, very, very tricky, because once you've signed that um, contract, again, you know, I emphasize the fact that you are liable. Um, it's unfortunate that the car, I mean, he's had it for, for less than a year, if this is a real scenario. Going to the dealership, they need to do an assessment in terms of, I mean, he, in this case, he's saying he's trading down. Yes. An assessment in terms of your affordability and possibly, you know, explore the option of moving that, um, that balloon to your new finance. It is not advisable. I mean, myself and Gary spoke about it earlier that, you know, it's not advisable to move a balloon payment into your new finance because you just get into the cycle of, you know, not affording this thing that, you, that you're that trying to, to afford in this case. And the debt will always hang above your the head. The debt will always yeah. hang above your head. Um, so where you can avoid it, you know, I mean, there's other options in terms of keeping that car for longer, perhaps, um, or even the new one. Should it be approved that you move that balloon to, to the new one? 
keeping their car for longer because if it's a lower premium amount, it's obviously more affordable, but that balloon will essentially be hanging above your head. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's 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 basically what what he needs to consider. Okay, that that's a cloud that will be above his head that he would need to, regardless of the of the, of the car that he trades down to. There's three finance options that are that are you know um, most popular. Yeah, Kala is um, what we call a balloon balloon payment. Yes. So basically, Leo, uh, you know, there's a portion, there's a, there's an amount that you pay, a huge lump sum of money that you pay at the end. So it's I would say postponed. Simovela emova. Mostly, it gets to a uh, They cannot readily raise a deposit or immediately afford the car, mm-hmm. so they postpone that lump sum capital amount at the end of the deal. In a advantage, wow because the initial installment is lower, as you can imagine, because you're postponing a huge amount of it. So are we at least the installment, the balloon? The uh, balloon is the installment initially. What most consumers are not mindful of, but if it's a 30,000 at the end of the deal, the rescission is 30,000 at the end of the deal, you are liable for leo malileo. And what we're finding is that most of the time, if our you deposit to Tati balloon, when it comes to the end, that 30,000, chances are slim to none that you actually have that 30,000, um, mm, mm. be, simply because of the type of customer that, that you are. So that's that's the balloon payment part. The most popular one, where somebody wants to own Le Moto um, you know, is, is the installment sale, where if you can raise a deposit, great, because then you reduce their installment upfront. Um, and okay. then at the end, once you're done paying, you, your, the car is yours, um, essentially. Okay. The third one Gary spoke about is, um, you know, it's rental and there's a, there's a guaranteed future value, but that has terms and conditions in terms of, you know, you, you have to drive so many kilometers uh, to guarantee this value. Ayo. You have to keep it in good condition. If you take it back and you have missed any of those conditions, then you are liable. You know, again, you, you get into a different agreement in terms of you've ruined the tires or you've increased the mileage or you've not kept it in good condition. This is how much. What are the consequences get of you liability? Will they rent to own? You, there's an amount that you would pay if, if you've not kept to you know the contract. Sure. Um, or alternatively, you can settle it the, the, that amount. And so le uma le at the end of the deal, or le bangili ya kona gutle we check le moto is still in a good condition. Hundred percent. So at the end, there's a month to month amount that you pay for the rental, mm. right? At the end, you then get into a discussion. Uh, you know, with the financier, with the dealership, when you take it back, they do an assessment. Have you stuck to the conditions of the term? Mm-hmm. If you haven't, there's certain liabilities, there's certain penalties that, that, that you're liable for. And then you can also get an option to, you know, to settle, to settle it and own it. Mm-hmm. Or if it's in good condition, which is very rare, um, you get to give it back to the dealership and then, and then walk away or take out another uh, rent to own um, agreement. Essentially, there's options. Uh, but what are the pitfalls for that? No, but uh, it sounds attractive. Ah, in as much as decline, so I might as well just uh, you know exploit this option. What are some of the pitfalls or the cons of this? So the pitfalls are that you know it is very rare that people stick to the terms and conditions mm. in terms of mileage, in terms of wear and tear, and when you take it back and you are told that you did not stick to this, so there's penalties. A lot of times people are not um, prepared for that. Cons are if you know for a fact that, for instance, you, you use that mileage for business travel and you will know that you will stick to it, you take it back, you get another one. Okay. It's not, it, it's it's viable for people, I would say, you know, they want to turn cars in quite quickly because they use them for, for work or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. That's a viable option if you're in that kind of a, um, environment or, or, or need for a vehicle per se, not okay. to own. Yeah.